Thank you both for joining us this afternoon. Adrian, if I could start with you. When Nadine Dory says she has been the victim of a public frenzy, a clearly orchestrated and almost daily uh, set of personal attacks, has she got a point, do you think? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, well, I mean, yes, she does have a point. If she feels she has a point, then she has a point. I have to say, from my own experience, having tweeted something not wholly in support of her, but simply pointing out her backstory and the fact that the hate and vitriol expressed towards her is too much. The, the vitriol I have received in response to that tweet has been absolutely astonishing. I could read out a few words uh, vermin and vile and far-right Tory and fraud and fascist and bitch. All of these words have simply been elicited from my own tweet drawing attention to the vitriol expressed towards her. So, yes, if that's a fraction of what she experiences, it must be appalling. Do you think it, the criticism that she's faced is legitimate, Adrian? Is your point is that actually that criticism has strayed into language and rhetoric, which yes, is that, beyond that, the pale? That, that's absolutely true. I'm all for criticising MPs. That's what democracy and robust debate is about. And I haven't agreed with everything that, that Nadine has stood for, uh, not least the online harms bill and the privatisation of Channel 4 and, uh, to Channel 4. I'd oppose those sorts of things. I don't agree with her on everything. I'm all for addressing concerns over her conduct, over the way she's behaved over the past six to nine months. Mm -hmm. All of those things are subjects of valid criticism. Mm -hmm. But all of these fascist and vermin and bitch and far... I mean, the C word is out there in abundance. That's come to me uh, uh, since I tweeted my... Su not support for her, but my, my sympathy for the vitriol she's experiencing. This is a fraction of what she experiences, and I think the threshold has been crossed. OK. Uh, listen to that. It's Christina Patterson. Adrian, hold on the line if you would. Christina, yes, th that sort of language that Adrian's describing, we'd all agree, I think, that that is beyond the pale, wouldn't we? Of course we would. Of course we would. And I've, I mean, anyone who appears regularly on TV, uh, and particularly women, are used to receiving that kind of abuse all the time. Mm. I've managed to get one person uh, a suspended prison sentence because of the malicious communications that he has sent me. I, nobody can argue for one moment that any of that is legitimate or part of uh, a valid contemporary debate. But that's not, I believe, what we're talking about here. And I do think, as you suggested earlier, or the question you raised was, is Nadine Doris conflating um, sort of the, the hate that she claims to be receiving and the abuse she's receiving with legitimate criticism. And my answer to that would be that it appears to be the case. She is the one who brought into question the Privileges Committee, its investigation into Boris Johnson's Partygate situation and its report. And she used the words kangaroo court about um, an investigation set up by the House of Commons with enormous due process with evidence gathered. She said there wasn't a shred of evidence when the whole report presented very carefully uh, in a legal fashion the evidence that had been gathered. So I'm afraid if anyone has poured hysteria into public debate over the past few years, it has been Nadine Doris. And the tone of her letter to, her resignation letter to Rishi Sunak was petulant and I'm afraid to say hysterical. And I don't like to use the word hysterical of women because I think it's very often a sexist term. But I'm afraid I do think there was a hysterical element to it. It was totally narcissistic. It was all about her achievements. And then it was blaming Rishi Sunak for all kinds of things mm -hmm. that you couldn't possibly blame him for. I'm no Tory, but, you know, to blame him for the situation that the UK is in after 13 years of Tory government when he's been in power for less than a year is utterly ridiculous. So I'm afraid Nadine Doris has nobody to blame for the criticism she's receiving, she's received and is receiving, except herself, because she is the person who has barely been near the House of Commons. She is the person who has not turned up at any surgeries in her constituency. She is the person who her local constituents and councils have complained about. She is that person, nobody else. And it's not Rishi Sunak who's whipped up this uh, feeling of unease. It's been gathering for some time due to her negligence and claiming taxpayers' money for a job she hasn't been doing.
Adrian, just on that point, Christine, Christine is right, isn't she? That the anger, the fr it's not a frenzy that Nadine Dorries is, is, is talking about here. That's her word. It's a outpouring of anger at somebody taking a taxpayer funded salary, a pretty cushy cut salary, while refusing to show up in Parliament and do a key part of her job. That anger is absolutely legitimate, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, but, but it's important uh, to see these things in perspective. The last nine months to a year haven't been great from Nadine's point of view, but the previous 17 years have been ones of service. She's, she's at least moved her majority from 8,000 to 25,000. She must have been doing something right. But this isn't unique to the Conservatives or indeed unique to Nadine Doris. Where's Nick Brown? Jared O'Mara wasn't representing his constituents in Sheffield Hallam for an awful long time. These things happen. I think that Nick Brown's been absent for almost a year as well, hasn't he? Well, he's being investigated, it, isn't he, by his yes, party? Yes, yes, but, but the, the point is he's not serving his constituents. But it's a bit, it's it's a bit new, different new, if someone's been asked to stay away from Parliament pending an investigation, whereas Nadine yes. Dorries just couldn't be bothered to turn up, by all accounts. Well, I, I don't know, of course, what's going on in the background, and neither does anyone. If Nadine feels it isn't appropriate for her to attend, mm. she must have reasons for doing that. Well, we can surmise what they are, but I wouldn't judge uh, from some experience as well of the way the Conservative Party works behind the scenes. I wouldn't judge her from appearances. It is totally inappropriate. Adrian, let me just pick up on another point Christina was raising, which was really an, an allegation, I think, of hypocrisy here. This letter is packed full of venom at Rishi Sunak, and it's not just yes. his policies or his politics. She mocks the clothes he, he wears. She mocks yes, his yes. smile. She's got, a yes. she's got a history of using language that I can't repeat on air about people on Twitter. She's threatened to appear a journalist, ball, nail a journalist balls to the floor using his own teeth. I mean, if there's somebody that can't legitimately call out toxicity in political debate, isn't that person Nadine Dorries? Uh, she may be one of them. And, and uh, as I said, I wouldn't agree with everything uh, she has said or the way she has always expressed herself. But some MPs do that. Diane Abbott has been one and, 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 and others have, have been a little intemperate in the way they have expressed themselves in in social media. But that doesn't justify the absolute hate and vitriol that they then receive from thousands upon thousands of people. I think it's also important to know some context here, and that's that Nadine has been a victim herself of a sort of inverted snobbery from George Osborne and David Cameron when when she was suspended without any kind of hearing at all. and. And she, she then tweeted that they don't even know the price. Of yeah, the she called them milk. arrogant posh boys, yes. which, again, you yes, might yes, say it, is it, not necessarily it, it, the sort of tone yes, you it, want it, politicians using. That, that, that's, that's quite right. But it's all coming from, from a sense of injustice directed to her because she's got a working class background, council estates from Liverpool. Okay. All, 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 all of that doesn't, of course, automatically justify it. Mm -hmm. But there's baggage there that needs to be taken into account. Mm -hmm. Adrian, thank you. Uh, Christina, just finally on this, uh, Nadine Dorries aside somewhat, would you agree that our political debate has become dangerously toxic, that the language being used on all sides often does go too far and that we've got to a place where actually MPs are putting themselves or, or, or ending up at physical in, in, in a place of physical threat and risk? Well, I think uh, I think clearly it's toxic and clearly social media has played a huge part in that. And as I said earlier, I don't condone anybody using any of that kind of language or fostering hate or threatening violence or any of the other things. But, you know, as I said, if anyone, if you were to pick one MP who has done more than almost any other MP one can mention to add uh, anger, vitriol, revenge, petulance mm. and whipping people into a frenzy, that would be Nadine Doris. I don't wish anybody to have abuse. I get a lot of it and it's not very pleasant. Mm -hmm. Any woman who goes on TV is constantly told how ugly, old and stupid she is mm -hmm. and it's not much fun. Mm -hmm. But I'm afraid that is the price for any kind of public life and it's the price it, of public service. It's got worse though, hasn't it? it? It's got worse in yes, the last few years. Why do you it think has. that is? Well, I I think, I'm afraid, I think that Nadine Doris's hero, Boris Johnson, played a key part in that because the whole, David Cameron in calling the Brexit referendum mm -hmm. and the whole way that referendum was, the, the debate was conducted and the whole kind of demonising of 
people, for example, who voted Remain as liberal elite, elite Remainers, Ramoners, all of that, I'm afraid that that created a toxic, polarised environment mm-hmm. that we haven't recovered from in this country. And it echoed, of course, what happened in the US with Trump. And no doubt that's all going to, to well, it's already happening again. And, and clearly sort of disastrous and potentially tragic circumstances. But uh, it breaks my heart what has happened to political debate in this country. And the only way that we can try to address it is by being civil mm-hmm. and calm and sensible and looking at issues, not at how people look, not at their background, not saying that someone is a posh boy or okay. someone is working class, but looking at how they behave. And I'm afraid if we look at Nadine Doris's behaviour mm. over the past year or so, I don't think it I don't think it looks too good. Thank you both. Great to speak to you. Dr. Adrian Hilton is an educationalist and honorary research fellow at the University of Buckingham and a former advisor to Michael Gove. Christina Patterson, thank you too. Uh, you're a writer and broadcaster.